Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We're going to turn now in drum taps to a poem called Dirge for Two Veterans. This is poem number 24 of the 43 of drum taps. It's an example and one of the very few examples of closed form. We're going to have regular stanza kind of formation here and that is unusual uh, for us. And in some ways, this is a predictor of what's to come in a few moments when we do O oh, Captain, My Captain, another one of the few poems in Lees of Grass that will pro try and play a certain type of closed form. We'll, we'll obviously get to it. I want to remind us again that in To The O oh, Cause, Whitman argued that my book and the war are one, and what I have argued as a sustained theodicy, and I think we're going to see that played out here again. Now our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net down the left hand side talks with Walt. Everything from inscriptions, we gave a set of introductory comments for drum taps. We just uh, finished with Splendid Silent Sun. Let's turn to our Nortons quickly to hear about this poem. Two uh, veterans. First appearing in the sequel to Drum Taps, 1865 to 66. This elegy has remained unchanged in all editions. One of the few poems, Norton says, of Leaves of Grass, which employ regular stanzic form. Its artistry has been highly praised, among others, by John Bailey, Whitman's English biography, who characterizes this as incomparably fine. So there are some people who consider this one of the strongest poems of Leaves of Grass and the drum tap section. In its solemnity of loss corresponds with the drum beat, notice the rhythms of a death march, and with the plaintive tonality of lines unrhymed or dissonant. Note, for example, the initial consonantal rhyme of sunbeam and sabbath. We have assonance um, uh, in the associations of uh, their flooding and tears of pounding, whirring of drums through, of father and fell together, and the remarkable four-line reiteration of stanza two of moon that we'll pay attention to here in a second, modified by two adjectives in analyzed rhyme, ascending and silent. So there's all kinds of remarkable things happening here that we will want to point out. And again, the, the rhythm is short, long, long, short, which will give the sense of drum beats as well. Now, I believe that in many ways, this is the return back to Homer. So when we take a look at this poem, we are, in fact, going back to our Homer and to our Virgil and the celebration, of course, of the fallen, and that will be significant as well. Notice here, though, there's not a true rhyme going on, so we're going to have a kind of dissonance that will be played there. Let's work through the poem. The last sunbeam lightly falls from the finished Sabbath on the pavement here and there beyond it is looking down a new made double grave. So we'll begin, notice, with the word dirge um, in the title. Go back to year that trembled dirge, uh, the cold dirges of the baffled. You'll remember the use of that language for the veterans, of course, with vigil strange, the father and the son. That will be repeated here as well. Notice we just finished with sil uh, Silent Sun. Notice we're working with sunbeams, but now here notice symbolically it's the last. Notice lightly falls, the respect will be a part of that word lightly, the, um, from the finished Sabbath. Again, notice sunbeam Sabbath and the alliterative quality. On the pavement here and there beyond, it is looking down a new made double grave. So here we are in a cemetery double grave. Lo, the use of that word we're familiar with, the moon ascending up from the east, the silvery round moon, notice the repetition of moon, beautiful over the housetops, ghastly phantom moon, immense and silent moon. Um, and again, notice the power of the word silent, especially in drum taps. Phantom, by the way, we're going to come back to here in a few stanzas. And then finally, from the first two stanzas, the narrator speaker the, the voice uh, of, the, of the bard steps in. I see, and we're going to hear in the next stanza, I hear, I see a sad procession, and I hear the sound of coming full keyed bugles. Think about drum taps, and the bugle is going to play taps. All the channels of the city streets, they're flooding as with voices and with tears. In other words, think about what is being pointed out here. Death is always sociologically palpable. In other words, 
all of the city, all of us are engaged in the mourning of the loss of father and son. I hear the great drums pounding and the small drums steady whirring, and every blow of the great convulsive drums strikes me through and through. If at the beginning of drum taps we were celebrating how drums were calling us all to battle, here, of course, after a tragic death of father-son in a double grave, the drums now will strike through and through. Obviously, convulsive is a powerful word here of sadness. For the son is brought with the father, and then in parenthetics, in the foremost ranks of the fierce assault, they fell. Two veterans, son and father, drop together and the double grave awaits them in parenthetics. In other words, it's like an aside to make sure that we understand it isn't just a double grade. But notice generationally now what is lost. Not only father, but also son. And that is to say so many important potentialities are lost in this tragic moment. Now, nearer, and again, it's this genius uh, telescoping way that Whitman as a poet can kind of go from far to nearer, nearer, up closer. Now, nearer blows the bugles and the drums strike more convulsive and the daylight or the pavement quite has faded. In other words, think about what is lost in war. So much is fading and lost. And the strong dead march enwraps me. Again, I told you guys, leaves of grass, there's this thing about hugging and wrapping and, and covering. Um, notice the blankets from earlier poems that are covering the dead. Um, this idea of, of, being, of being somehow engulfed. In the eastern sky, up buoying, the sorrowful vast phantom moves illumined. So now we're going to personify the moon. Tis a mother's large transparent face and heaven's brighter growing. And again, the personification of the moon is helped with the parenthetic. Then we're going to get five O's. Just to do it because we can. Do you remember back um, when we met, starting from Pomenoc 19, the very last words of that poem? O oh, Camaretto close, O oh, you and me at last and us two only, O oh, a word to clear one's path ahead endlessly, O oh, something ecstatic and undemonstrable, O oh, music wild, O oh, now I triumph and you shall also, O oh, hand in hand, O oh, wholesome pleasure, O oh, one more desirer and lover, O oh, to haste firm, holy, to haste, haste on with me. And we pointed out those ten O's, O's, O's. And they're wonderful, they're joyous. But notice now, later in Leaves of Grass, in drum taps, right in the center of drum taps, we're going to use five of these O's, but it's going to be, it's going to be lamentation, right? It's going to be lugubrious, it's going to be sad. Oh, strong dead march, you please me. Note the, note the shockingness of this. You please me, there will be four exclamation points to end this poem. O oh, moon immense with your silvery face, you soothe me. Again, this is the theodicy. I call this a sustained theodicy, Lisa Grass. In other words, we're coming to terms with the tragedy. O oh, my, notice mine, my soldiers twain together. O oh, my veterans passing to burial. What I have, I also give you. So there's this symbiosis that the poet is going to play with here. In other words, there's so much that's lost, so much that's gained. Back to the moon. The moon gives you light, and the bugles and the drums, that's the closest for drum taps that we come, right, with bugles and drums, give you music. So much of Leaves of Grass, if, if you've been reading with us, has been about music and chanting and the like. And my heart, oh my soldiers, my veterans, my heart gives you love. Love is used over 20 times in drum taps. It'll go, it'll, it'll be used first in, in Leaves of Grass in Cabin Ships at Sea, you'll maybe remember it. Um, fold my love, clear uh, uh, dear mariners, um, that idea of speaking to mariners and the word love gets used. How are we going to finish a poem like this now at 2A? Well, I think that Whitman is arguing that the greatest losses in war are in fact innocence and generational potentialities, no question. But he also seems to argue here, using the moon as a powerful symbol, that love is always going to be stronger than hate, and that in the end, that is what will restore democracy. At 2B, 
Well, we've, I mean, there's just so many things to talk about here. The formal structure, as we've already commented on, the alliteration, of course, of Sunbeam Sabbath, the iteration of round moon, phantom moon, silent moon, and the repetition that does provide us, the assonance of moon bugles through, soothe you, um, the, the, lack of, the, the, the lack at times, though, of a certain kind of uh, uh, rhyme that will provide a certain type of dissonance, the personification of the moon, all of that working powerfully rhetorically at, at to be, which is why some will read this poem as one of Whitman's greatest exemplars of traditional close form. He can definitely play the game. But at 3 a.m., I'm already gesturing us towards, oh, captain, my captain, in close form there. There is an argument to be made that the solemnity of the moment is warranted by the close form. It's a very solemn, uh, elegia uh, 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 kind of poem, and it's, uh, I mean, it's a dirge. It's intended to be a, 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 a sad kind of statement of what, of what is lost. Finally, at, at 3B, uh, what is for you the saddest situation that you've ever been a part of? Maybe it's a funeral you attended or you watched. And what was a time when grief was the cause of hope? That's the argument here, that in the end, out of this grieving will come hope. What is a time for you when that happened? I hope that reading Drum Taps is challenging you. Thank you.